Welcome to lesson seven and our new tall tale of John Henry. Before we get into our tall tale, we are going to review really quick our vocabulary word. We're going to start with the yellows, move down to the green, then to the red. Repeat after me as I read the words. Displeases. Curious. Fortune. Tune, constant, admiration, tamed. Which two words on our chart have a suffix? Remember, suffix means a little part of a word that attaches itself at the end. Which two words have suffixes? Yep, that should be admiration and tamed. Which word has a prefix, meaning attached itself at the beginning of a word? That would be the word displeases. Well, let's quickly review the our first two read alouds. Um, when I read the sentence, you're going to tell me what character fits that sentence. This main character was so big that he had to sleep in a covered wagon. That was Paul Bunyan. This character made an ax from the top of a tree. That was also Paul Bunyan. This character thought he was a coyote. Or that was Pecos Bill. This character had a pet ox named Babe. That was Paul Bunyan. This character was said to have built the Grand Canyon. And I gave you a tricky one. Well, kind of a tricky one. It's both characters, Pecos Bill and Paul Bunyan. This main character tamed a large snake. And that was Pecos Bill. In our story today, we're going to be learning about John Henry. Now, John Henry was a, a real life. Uh, he was he was a real life railroad worker. Now, when people were heading out west, to get out west and travel out west quicker, you want to travel on a train or railroad. They didn't have very many cars back in the day, so they would travel fast by train. But in order for to do that, thousands of people would need to be used to help lay down the railroad track. So you can see here, this one's already made by quite a bit of people. And you can see all the people trying to help out. Here are the little boards that are going across. So what they would do is they would lay the boards down and then what uh, they would have a couple guys with big hammers. And that was John Henry's job and to hold the uh, rail onto that wood. They use these big steel nails to drive in so because the trains are really heavy so to drive on that track it needs to hold the only way to hold that uh steel to the um wood would be a really long um nail at the bottom picture sometimes they had to go through big hills and mountains so they would also use dynamite to make tunnels they put dynamite in they light it and explode and they would it would help create holes into the mountain so then they can make tunnels for the trains to go through so one so they would be building a track so right here would be the middle of the united states so what would they be doing is they start there they had one team start this way and go to the east they had one one team start over here and go to the west, and they would meet in the middle, and they were laying down track all the way across so then people could travel out west a little bit quicker. So John Henry, he was a steel-driving man, meaning he had a hammer, and he would be the one nailing the um, nails into the rails so they can hold it onto the boards. After today's read aloud of John Henry, you should be able to compare and contrast Paul Bunyan and John Henry, and also show an understanding to the word feats. Now, I'm not talking about your feet. It's a different, uh, it's a different meaning of the word feats. So again, as you go through this read aloud today, listen for ways that Paul Bunyan and John Henry are similar and how they are different. 
In the 1860s, the United States was growing quickly. Immigrants were pouring in, and the railroad companies were laying train tracks that would carry settlers west. Why were they building tracks? Why were there tracks being built out west again? One of the railroad companies was called the Chesapeake and Ohio, or the C&O for short. The C&O Railroad was named for the two bodies of water it was intended to connect, the Chesapeake Bay along the east coast and the Ohio River in the west. Today, railroads cross the whole country. The engineers who planned the C&O Railroad had to overcome many challenges in order to get trains from Chesapeake Bay to the Ohio River. But no challenge or problem was greater than this. They had to run their tracks through the Appalachian Mountains. The Appalachians were like a big wall that separated the east from the west. Sometimes when the mountains were rolling, more like hills, the CNO workers were able to lay tracks over the top of them. Other times they were a other times they were able to lay track that zigzagged around the mountain like a snake but some mountains were too tall to go over or too big to go around. In those the cases, the only solution was a, to dig a tunnel right through the mountain. Digging tunnels was dangerous, was a dangerous work. The tunnels were dark and poorly ventilated. That means that there were, was barely enough fresh air inside the tunnels for the workers to breathe. Many workers were killed by sudden cave-ins. That's when the rocks fall into the tunnel. To dig the tunnel as fast as they could, railroad workers worked in teams of two. One man would crouch down and hold a steel spike. Spikes are long, thick nails used to hold railroad tracks together. Then the other man would hit the spike with a hammer, and the first man would twist the spike as much as they could. Then his partner would hit the spike with his hammer again. The two men would work together, banging and twisting, banging and twisting until they had driven the spike deep enough into the rock. Then they would pull out the spike, move it to another place, and start digging a new hole. The men would create a hole in the rock by hand without the help of complex machines. After a while, the rock would be able to be full of holes like a piece of Swiss cheese. Next, the dynamite men would take over. Why do you think these men are willing to do this dangerous work? The dynamite men would pack dynamite into the holes and detonate the explosive. Kaboom! The explosions would break up the solid rock into rubble. Then the workers would haul away the rubble and they would start digging again. To make the long, hard day's work go by faster, the railroad road workers used, used to have contests. They would pick two teams to see which team could drive the spike farther into the mountain in a set amount of time. The winners of these contests became heroes. People would tell stories about these steel-driving men and their amazing feats. Feats are accomplishments that take great strength and determination. Another thing the railway workers did to pass the time while they worked was singing songs. Sometimes they would even sing songs about other steel-driving men. One of these steel-driving men was named John Henry. No one knew for certain where John Henry was from. Some said he was from Georgia. Some said he was from Tennessee. Others said he was a Virginia man. As it turns out, it seems likely that he had been enslaved before the Civil War. He seems to have started working on the railroad sometime after the end of the Civil War. For years, people thought John Henry worked on the Big Bend Tunnel on the C&O line in West Virginia. But now we think he more likely worked on the Lewis Tunnel in Virginia. One thing we are sure of is that John Henry was a legend among railway workers. A legend is someone who is well known for doing something extremely well. 
A legend is also a story that is believed to be true, like this one. They sang a song that tells the story about how he was born with a hammer in his hand. Do you think he was really born with a hammer in his hand? Or is this an exaggeration? John Henry became known as the most courageous man who ever worked on the railroad. Even as a young boy, he could do the work of a man. That means that even as a boy, John Henry could do the work of older men. They said he had never been defeated in a steel driving competition. They said he hit the spike so hard that sparks flew through the air. They said John Henry could swing a 10-pound hammer from sunup to sundown and not even get tired. At first, I almost at first, almost all of the work on the tunnel was done by hand by workers like John Henry. Eventually, however, this began to change. People invented machines that could do some of the work. One of the machines they invented was a steam drill. This was a drill that was powered by a steamed engine or very hot water changed to steam, to steam, which is what powers a steam drill. The first steam drills were pretty good, but they were not great. The steam drills could drive a spike into the mountain for sure, but not as well as two strong experienced railway workers like John Henry and his partner. Over time, the machines got better and better. They eventually, they eventually began to replace the men who worked on the railroad tunnels. One day, the captain of John Henry's work team brought a steam drill to the work site. He bet that the steam drill could drive steel better than John Henry could. This machine was going to do the same job as John Henry and his crew, but faster. John Henry agreed to compete against the steam drill, and he swore he would do his best to beat it. John Henry said to the captain, Well, a man ain't a nothing but a man, but before I let a steam drill beat me down, I'll die with a hammer in my hand. Oh, I'll die with a hammer in my hand. How does what I just read different from the rest of the text that I was reading? I'll read it again. Well, a man ain't nothing but a man. But before I let a steam drill beat me down, I'll die with a hammer in my hand. Oh, I'll die with a hammer in my hand. So that little piece that I read is from a song called The Ballad of John Henry. A ballad is kind of like a poem or a song that tells a story. One of the bosses blew a whistle. John Henry went to work driving steel the old-fashioned way with a hammer and a spike. The captain started up the steam drill. It rattled away beside John Henry, belching steam and banging away at the mountain. The man and the machine worked side by side for several hours. Then the boss, the, then the boss blew his whistle again. The boss took the measurements, and then they announced the results. Who do you think will win, John Henry or the steam drill? John Henry had driven his spike a total of 15 feet into the mountain. And the steam drill, it had only drilled 9 feet. If John Henry dug 15 feet and the steam drill dug 9 feet, which one dug farther? John Henry had won. He had beaten the steam drill. Now the man that invented the steam drill, he thought he was mighty fine. But John Henry drove his 15 feet, and the steam drill only nine. Oh, oh, the steam drill only nine. That's another ex excerpt of the Ballad of John Henry. What is different about this text again? The other railway workers roared. John Henry received a cheer as loud as a roar. They were excited that John Henry had won. He had shown that a hard worker was better than a machine. But John Henry himself was in no condition to celebrate. He had worked so hard that he suffered a heart attack. John Henry hammered in the mountains, and his hammer was striking fire. 
Well, he hammered so hard that it broke his poor heart. And he laid down his hammer and died. Oh, oh, and he laid down his hammer and he died. The railway work men carried John Henry out of the tunnel. They laid him to rest with other workers who had died. But the legend of John Henry lived on. The C&O Railroad was completed a couple of years later. And for years to come, whenever locomotives or trains went down the C&O line, past the tunnel they thought John Henry helped dig, those who knew the story would say, there lies John Henry, the king of steel driving men. Why do you think John Henry is a legend? They took John Henry down the tunnel and they buried him in the sand. And every locomotive that comes a roaring by says, yonder lies a steel driving man. Oh, oh, yonder lies a steel driving man. So let's go through some comprehension questions. Why did people start using steam drills rather than relying on people to cut through the rocks and mountains? What parts of this story can really happen? And then what parts of this story were exaggerations? How is, the, how is John Henry a tall tale different from the other tall tales you have heard? So one difference is this tall tale was kind of was based on um, and turned into a song and that some people were singing as they uh, were working on the railroad. So here is some of that song we'll listen to right now. <laughs> So our word work word for today is the word feats. 
Repeat that word after me. Feats. What sound is the E-A making in this word? It's making the E sound. We had another word like that, and it was our first word. It was that word displeases. Also had that E-A making an E sound. What do you think the word feats means? Feats are achievements that require courage or great strength. One feat I think of that's in Michigan is right up that um, that connects the lower peninsula, upper peninsula is the Mackinac Bridge or the Mighty Mac. I feel like it's a big feat or it took a lot of courage and strength because first off, it took a lot of strength to get that bridge to be laid out, but it also took a lot of courage because it's the bridge is pretty high up, but also it's right in the middle of two lakes connecting each other. So it took a lot of courage to build that bridge as well. So it's a big achievement. Here's a sentence as an example with the word feats in it. Painting the outside of their house and building and building a new fence were big feats, but the Hernandez family managed to finish before the rain. Have you ever completed or accomplished a feat? For me, this past summer, I had I accomplished a feat by building a brand new deck around my house. It took a lot of strength to build the deck. To end your time, you're going to go through the Tall Tales chart again, and you're going to go through uh, the chart for John Henry. Now, there is one that's going to be left blank, and that will be Creations and Inventions. Now, you could put on there he invented tunnels, but it's, it, this isn't something that he invented himself. So there isn't really anything for Creations and Inventions, which is okay. This is still a tall tale because it's about an ele a legendary character. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for our final read aloud in our series, Fairy Tales and Tall Tales, where we'll read Casey Jones.